Hello everybody. Let's continue talking about thin lenses and image formation. So I'm, I'm using the same PowerPoint here, but now we're going to actually look at how a lens, and I'm going to start with a positive or converging lens, can form a real image. And we're going to write a new equation called the thin lens equation and also define something called lateral magnification. Then we're going to do a little numerical example just to get us used to how you can manipulate these equations. So last time we talked about the lens maker's formula, which helps you design a lens with a specific focal length. But let's suppose that now we want to form an image with this lens. Let's, let's make a positive lens. So, um, and again, we, we want to make sure we know how to do a ray trace with lenses. So this will be our start, our starting point. Okay, so here is a positive lens. How do I know it's positive? Because uh, look, it's thicker in the middle. We know that this lens has a focal length, right? It's in some surroundings, we'll assume air, it has a refractive index, so it has a focal length. And I'm going to note both of its focal points, the front focal point on the left and the back focal point on the right. Um, now, remember, we, when we send light in from left to right, if it was collimated, it would be focused to that back focal point, the one over here. You hear me using front and back, right? Like I said in the, in the last video, to the left is going to be front, to the right is going to be back. Um, so if we sent light in, collimated beam of light, from left to right, it would focus to the uh, back focal point. But I want, and also then, if we sent a collimated light from right to left, it would focus to the front focal point. This front focal point, even though we're going to be tracing from left to right and, quote, using this back focal point for our ray trace, it's good for reference to remember where this front focal point is. And you'll see that particularly in uh, the next video. Okay, um, because where the object is relative to this front focal point will tell you something about its imaging, um, the imaging of the lens. All right, anyway, here we go. I'm just going to put an object arbitrarily over here. Notice it is what I would call outside the front focal point, outside the focal point to the left. Okay, um, and what we're going to do next is we're going to do an official ray trace. Now, just like with the plain mirror ray trace, we're going to use the same two rays. So if you recall, the first ray that I draw should go from the tip of the object arrow parallel to the optic axis like that. But now, because we're using the refraction from the lens, we ask ourselves, what happens to this ray? We know it's going to get bent. Where? Well, think about it, right? This is a so-called collimated ray. It is parallel to the optic axis. So in our thin lens approximation, it goes through that back focal point. Any ray that's parallel to the optic axis is going to go through that back focal point like that. All right, so we've, got, we've uh, traced the first ray. Now, do you remember, what do we do with the second ray? The second ray comes from the same point on the object, the tip of the arrow. It always goes through here. It goes through the intersection point right, of the optical element with the axis. Now, I claim that in the thin lens approximation, this ray is going to go straight through right through the middle of the lens. In our ray trace, we're going to assume that. It is, in fact, a really good approximation in the thin lens approximation. And I'm going to try to show you that. Let me, uh, I'm going to get out of my screen uh, presentation. Okay, I've switched over to my notebook, and I want to try to show you why it's a good approximation to assume that that second ray goes straight through the middle of the lens. So this is your lens right here. 
Oops, my pad is not on. I'm so sorry. There we go. So here's your lens right here. It looks something like this. Oops. There we go. And this is the optic axis. So the light rays coming in like this. Now there's really a refraction that's occurring right here. So this is going to bend towards the surface normal. It's going to bend up a little bit. And then it's going to refract out like this. Now what we're assuming is that, see there's a little bit of vertical deflection. The beam, com beam comes out a little bit lower than it enters. But what we're assuming is that right near the optic axis where those rays are hitting, that vertical deflection is not significant. And right near the, the optic axis, the surface of the lens is almost flat, right? Even if, if it's a very curvy lens, right near the optic axis, it's re almost flat. So the direction of the exiting ray is going to be almost exactly the same as the direction of the incident ray, okay, according to Snell's law and the way the sine function works. So we're going to assume that as the ray's coming near this intersection point, it's going to leave without much vertical deflection. So basically, and because the lens is thin, it's basically going to go straight through. Okay, it's a really good approximation. Um, and we're going to use it all the time. Okay, all right, so uh, I'm going to get back to our power. Oh, I'm sorry, there, I, I had to stop and start again to get back into full screen presentation mode, so I think I cut off me saying, well, I'm going to get back to full screen mode. But here it is, there is the first ray, and here is the ray that we will always draw. The second ray, it will always go straight through like that, right through the middle of the lens. It doesn't matter about the curvature of this lens. It doesn't matter if this is a positive or negative lens. This ray will always go right through the center. All right, so look, we're done tracing those two rays. So we ask ourselves, are the rays converging or diverging? As they leave the lens, they're definitely converging. Where do they intersect? Oh, right there. Bing, bing, bing. That is the tip of the image arrow. So now we can just draw in the arrow from the optic axis to that point of intersection. That's the image. We did it. Now, this is a real image, unlike the plane mirrors image, which was virtual. These rays are converging. They, there is light that actually goes to form this image. We've only looked at the image formation of the tip of the arrow. But there are other rays that are going to intersect to form all the other points of the image. So this is a real image. If we were to put a screen right here or a piece of paper and we had enough light, we would see the image there formed on that screen or paper. All right, there it is. All right, now let's define some things. Just like with the plane mirror, from object to optical element is the object distance. That would be positive for this image formation from the optical element. And again, these would be measured from the, quote, center of the lens. Um, that would be the image distance from the lens to the image. That would be, in this particular ray trace, a positive Q. We have the object height from the optic axis to the tip of the object. That's a positive H. The image height would in fact be negative for this image because we measure h prime the image height from optic axis to tip of image so that would be a negative value for h prime okay now next thing i'm going to write down is the so-called thin lens equation and oh i apologize my equation editor uses a different font i was using arial up here and this is like i think cambria math uh, some of the equations I want, and I went and edited and changed it to Arial. This is one I did not. So I think you can see that this is the focal length little f. Okay. 
Um, this is the so-called thin lens equation. It's a really important equation because it relates the focal length of the lens to the object and image distance. I am not going to derive this equation, but just like with the lens maker's equation, it is derived um, in volume five, number two, the computer homework in the introduction, along with the lens maker's equation. Once you derive the lens maker's equation, you can go back and pretty quickly derive the thin lens equation. But this is a really important one, guys. All right. So we'll, we're going to use that one a lot. The other thing I'm going to define while I'm here is something called the lateral magnification. And we're going to use uppercase M, big M, for lateral magnification. A little bit later, we'll introduce a lowercase m for angular magnification. So you have that to keep straight. But uppercase M for me is lateral magnification. And that is defined to simply be, as people like to say, h prime over h. Take the image height over the object height. Okay. Now, uh, the reason we call it lateral magnification is you're simply asking what is the relative size, or I should say height, the lateral dimension of the image compared to the lateral dimension of the object. Okay. Now, keep in mind with our sign convention and this ray trace, this image formation, h prime is negative. So strictly speaking, the lateral magnification for this lens is negative. Okay, so if you look at the sign of the magnification, plus just means the image is oriented in the same direction as the object. It is non-inverted. If the magnification is negative, that means the image is inverted with respect to the object. Okay? Plus and minus lateral magnification doesn't tell you is the image bigger or smaller. For that, you have to look at the absolute value of the magnification. If the absolute value of the magnification is bigger than one, the image is bigger. If it's less than one, it's smaller. If it's equal to one, it's the same size, or I should say it has the same lateral dimension as the object. That's one to one imaging. Okay. All right. Now, what we can do, though, is we can get another formula for lateral magnification. And I want you guys to look at the two triangles I just highlighted. OK, so if, if you notice, these are similar triangles. This angle right here is the same as this angle right here. So if I look at H prime over H, notice that H prime is this vertical leg of that right triangle. H is this vertical leg. So the ratio of those two sides should be the ratio of the horizontal leg of this triangle, which is Q, to the horizontal leg of this triangle, which is P. So I can make the lateral magnification. I can write it as, it seems like, Q over P. The only tricky thing is, is our sign convention. We call this, in this ray trace, a negative h prime. So that's making our magnification be negative. But this q is positive. So if we just took q over p, we wouldn't get the negative sign. So we have to come in and uh, we have to put in a negative sign right here to keep the plus minus sign of m correct if we're going to use the ratio of image to object distance. OK, so just a little bit tricky there. There's a minus sign right here to keep the SIGNs, the signs, correct. OK, so that's all I want to introduce in this slide, or in this uh, PowerPoint to, for today, is the th this video, I should say, the thin lens equation and the lateral magnification. But I do want to do an example problem, OK, just uh, for the sake of doing an example to get you used to this. Um, so let me end this show. Uh, okay, guys, so I jumped in my notebook so we can do an example. Suppose we design a lens and it has a focal length of plus 10 centimeters, so we make a converging lens. The question is, where do we put the object so that a real image is formed? And, hey, guys, uh, so 
I've jumped to my example here in my notebook that I want to do. So suppose you have a lens with a focal length of plus 10 centimeters. So you've made a lens, positive lens. The question is, where should you place an object so that that lens forms a real image that is the same size as the object? So it's a neat example because we're going to have to combine both the thin lens equation and the definition of lateral magnification. It's not just a straight substitution into one formula. So let's see, we'll write down the thin lens equation. We have 1 over F is 1 over P plus 1 over Q. And what I'm after really is P. If I can find the object distance, then you know where to put the object because that's how far it should be from the lens. The problem is we know F, but we don't know Q. So we do know some information, though, about the size of the image compared to the object. So we know something about the lateral magnification. Now, we want the object and the image to have the same size. The tricky thing here is you might be tempted to say h prime equals h, but it has to be minus h. You are going to have to remember that when a positive lens forms a real image, it's inverted. So h prime is opposite signed from h. Okay, now the way that helps me is, if you recall, an alternate way I can write lateral magnification is minus q over p. So the fact that h prime equals negative h means that this magnification has to be negative 1. So if I look at minus q over p has to be negative 1, oh, that tells me that the image distance and the object distance have to equal each other. So what I'll do is I'll go back to the thin lens equation, and I'm just going to use that information. So I can write 1 over f is 1 over p, and I'm going to substitute that q has to equal p. Then you have to remember how to add fractions. Ah, I can do it. I look for a common denominator. Oh, I already got one. So 1 over p plus 1 over p should be 2 over p. So then I can solve for p, right? So I'll just solve for p and say, yes, p has to be twice f. It has to be double the focal length. So it has to be positive 20 centimeters. So you should put that object 20 centimeters from the lens. And notice that if you do that, your image distance equals p, so it'll also be 20 centimeters, and your magnification, your lateral magnification, will be minus 1. So that's a nice little example. And if you want to do one-to-one -one imaging with a positive lens forming a real image, just put the object at twice the focal length, okay, and it'll happen. Okay. Bye-bye. See you in the next video.